What's up? It's been a while. It's been a while. I don't remember when the last time I did a live stream. I do not remember. It's been a whirlwind few months. A crazy few months. But a good few months. The best eight month period in my entire adult life. We got a lot of boxing to talk about. Um, I'm going to be here tomorrow covering all three cards. Gilberto, excuse me, Ursuline Goulamarian versus Gilberto Ramirez for the Cruiserweight WBA title. Very significant fight for the Cruiserweight division. That's going to be on the zone. Alex, Alexis, uh, Alexa Roja, Roja, Rocha, how you pronounce his name? He returns tomorrow. You have Oscar Valdez taking on Liam Wilson for the WBO interim title. At 130 pounds, Navarrete is moving up to 135 to fight Dennis Baranchek on May the 18th, the week after Loma versus Cambosos, which Big J is going to be at. That's going to be for the IBF title. So you see where I'm going there? That's an IBF and a uh, potential WBO unification between the winner of uh, Loma Cambosos and uh, 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 Navarrete and Dennis Baranchek. Both of those fights are a week apart. Also, you have uh, Yocasta, Yocasta Valley, I forgot how you pronounce her name, taking on Sinisa Superbad Estrada. Ooh, high seductive woman boxing match there. Uh, and then you have this card right here, the biggest card of the weekend. Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fendora. The six foot six towering inferno, Sebastian Fendora with his Tekken t-shirt on. His sister's really good too. She got this mean scowl. When she's in the ring. You're going to have a uh, old man. Iris Lindy Lara. 41 years old. You know in Cuban years. You know he's probably like 45. You know Iris Lindy Lara been in America like 30 years. And he still ain't speaking no English. At all. He's taking on Mick Pretty Boy Zarafa. Remember he got stretchered by Peter Quillen. Back on PBC on NBC years ago. He had two wars with Jeff Horn. A lot of people felt that the fight with Kell Brooks should have been the draw, but basically they're fighting for the WBA uh, title at 160 in the very now weak 160 pound division with Jamal Charlo still holding on to that belt for whatever reason. And you got James Beck Ali Mahalala, who's the IBF and WBO champion. So it's a very uh, division. You got uh, Roly Romero versus uh, Mayan Aztec Inca head statue head Isak Cruz that's supposed to be the fight of the card you have Brian Mendoza taking on Sergei Baron Bahachak for the WBC interim title so basically it's a lot of fights tomorrow excuse me Saturday I'm sorry tomorrow night's fight hold on hold on let me back up the Valdez Liam Wilson fight is a Friday night fight. That's tomorrow night with with the uh, Estrada Valle uh, uh, Maritala returns too. That's tomorrow night. They just had that weigh in today. We're going to watch that. The Ursula Goulamarian versus uh, Gilberto Ramirez WBA cruiserweight title fight is on the zone. The same time as this pay per view, Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fandora. So I'm going to be busy closing out the month strong. And um, we have some that's significant pretty much every single week. We got a lot to talk about. Is it true that Errol Spence stiffed Derek James for all of his money? Did he give him some money? It's confirmed that all of Errol Spence's uh, photos, pictures, posters, gym bags are all down from Derek James' gym. Terrence, Terrence Crawford gave uh, Errol Spence the beating of his life. He beat the shit out of him. Like, every time I think about it, I be thinking like, yo, you ever think about like uh, like when you was watching Spence uh, versus Crawford, and then you go back and think like when you see like a little clip or a highlight, you get like PTSD. You were like, and you think like, damn, he beat the shit out of him. Like, that was the ass whooping of a century. People still hurting, hurting, hurting. Like people were having mental collapses. No, no bullshit. 
Like I thought the Wilder mental collapse was bad. Well, Wilder's fans mental collapse. They was they was, you know, they were making conspiracy theories and shit. But Spence fans were really hurt. Like you can feel like even now the despair like that they go through when it's brought up. But anyway, we got to talk about Tim Zhu and how you know his manager said the dumbest shit you could possibly ever say is basically that they're targeting uh uh they, you know, Errol Spence, Crawford left those when Crawford's right there. He's the mandatory. And then even said that Crawford would drop his belt. This was um, from the boxing voice. I mean, uh, Zoo would drop his belt. Why would you say that? We're going to have Big J on the line later on. Happy Thursday, guys. Have you guys been? So where do we begin? I guess we need to go back and watch the face-offs and talk about each individual fight. Here, let me pull this stuff up. Let me pull this stuff up for you. So yeah, it's been a lot going on. Um, um, um. I opened up my email, my boxing email, and I was like, "Yo, what is what? Like, so much has happened in boxing." So I've been catching up over the next, over the last week. Yeah, I'm interested in Fabio Wardley versus uh, Fraser Clark too. I got Wardley, but yeah, so much has been happening. So I'm playing catch up. Like, man, you know, I'm hearing boxing scene going under, you know, like PBC on Prime is barely kicking off. Like, it's been like so much going on. I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's taboo to talk about, but PBC on Prime still looking cheap. Now, mind you, um, from the, the understanding is um, Amazon is only providing the platform, but this is Al Heyman's money. This is his show. Like back on the uh, 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 NBC on PBC on NBC PBC on ESPN, where like they were like he was footing the bill. This is his show. There's no backers, from my understanding. This is a PBC Premier Boxing Champion show being broadcast on Amazon Prime. That right there is an amazing feat, to be honest. But we just expect so much from Al Heyman. Remember when PBC on NBC launched? They had that gala. It was all secretive. They didn't want people to know. People had to dress up in suits and shit. Remember that shit when PBC first launched? You ever had Adrian Broner all husky in his suit? Remember that? Free boxing for all. Remember when PBC on Fox launched that the PBC weigh-ins and press conference used to come on Fox Sports 2, FS1? Remember that shit? I've been watching all the build. I've been even look at this. Look at this sticker. How's this slapped on there? Like, you know, see, like, is it, is it, you know, you know, like, I'm sorry. It's not, um, how does the learner LB say it? It's not shitting or trashing on the product. It's like, why can't we talk about it? Y'all shit look cheap. Why do I have to worry about, and this is a real thing. Why do I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going on a bit off on a bit of a tangent. Give me, give me one minute. You know, this is a bit of a thing. We can't, let me tell you what boxing media don't want you to do. I guess it's all media. They don't want you talking about the real shit. They start fucking around with your credentials. If you start being like, yo man, you, we saw a video where you said our event looked trash. And it's like, what nigga? It did look trash. Like, yo, y'all used to be better than this. You're better than this PBC. Like I expected something new and grand when I found out it's like, oh, they're going to Amazon Prime to mind you. I was hearing this a long time ago. Like this was in the works since like the beginning of like January last year. I think I started hearing about it in November of 2022. So when I started seeing I forgot when, to be honest. So when I started seeing him putting on all those pay-per-views, you know, and I said, oh, OK, he built and he see he got a he started putting on all them big fights and working with other promoters. I'm thinking to myself, he building up his his portfolio. That's what Al Heyman's doing, building up. He built up his portfolio last year, put on all these banger fights so he can be like, look, we put on Spence Crawford. We put on Ron Garcia, Tank Davis. You know, we got Canelo. We signed up Canelo to go to prime or anybody like, look who we got. Meanwhile, they were all pay-per-views. That's the reason why he had a good year last year at PBC. That's what we're not allowed to talk about because it was a contract year. You know how it is with sports, whether it's baseball, basketball, you know, football. What happens when a player's at the end of his contract? You know, they start trying to play all hard. I'll never forget uh, Vince Carter did it in Toronto. 
literally said I play when I want to. Then went to New Jersey, started balling, got that big ass contract. That's what Al Heyman was doing last year. You can't fool me. T Street's been around the block. T Street's been covering boxing for 12 years now. My God. I've been full-time covering boxing since September of 2013. I guess you can't say I've been full-time. I haven't been really full-time since 2019, to be honest. Like 2018, 2019, I was moving, moving, moving. I was at a lot of shit, getting in a lot of shit with boxers and promoters and shit, man. Shit was wild. I was at the whole May Mac uh, press tour. I had That shit was wild. So, you know, I guess this is the right time to really like, uh, like, like dip my foot back in my toe into the deep end of boxing media. It's time to get, it's time to get up in there. So I'm going to be in New York in April for the uh, final press conference for, uh, Haney versus uh, Ron Garcia and Donnell. I ain't forget about you, man. We need to have a talk. Like, I'm sorry. I've been avoiding you. I ain't really been avoiding you. Been a lot of shit going on. I had to really like cleanse my mind and my body. If you understand, like I've been really like living guys, really, I've been really living the last eight months. The first time in my adult life, probably since I was a bartender before 30, I've been like living, traveling, obviously fine women, fine foods, you know, drinks, you know, $400 steaks and shit, uh, like really doing good, you know? So, but I'm a degenerate boxing fan, just like you. You know, I can't stay away. I watched Campbell. Let me tell you something. You know what the highlight of my weekend last weekend was? That's how much of a fucking degenerate I am. How much I love this sport. I said, I woke up like 4 a.m. And I said, I think Campbell Hatton going to get beat up today. And what do you know? Campbell Hatton goes and gets beat up. Well, he didn't really get beat up, but he lost. I get excited for Campbell Hatton fights because I be like any day Campbell Hatton can lose. I got to make sure I'm there when it happens. Watching it right on the screen. No bullshit. That's my thought process. That's my thought process. I guess we're going to jump right into it. Let's bring Big J in, huh? What do you guys say? Let's let's go in hot. Let's go in hot. He just messaged me. Let's go in hot. Let's bring in Big J. I just sat here and watched this whole press conference. This press conference for a zoo versus Fandora ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing there. It's no replay value. I would have, I was going to stream it. Then I said, nah, I had a bad feeling. I said, no, I had a bad feeling. I said, you know what? I'm not streaming this boring shit to the, to the people. We're going to talk about it and recap it. We're going to talk about it and recap it. But no, this is an excellent card, though. Not a pay-per-view card, but an excellent card. Not a $69.99 card. That's the price. But it's an excellent card. You have something like seven titles on the line during, in the card. The whole card. The WBC situation is kind of weird because you got Fandora, who lost his last fight, which was, which was his WBC interim. And Zoo fighting for the vacant WBC title as well as the WBO. You have Jamel Charlo, who's the champion in recess. He got booked for beating up a transgender or something. What? Remember that, remember that audio? We thought it was a girl, but really turns out it looked like he beat up a transgender. Or something along those lines, allegedly. It's so weird. But anyway, Jamel Charlo, the champion in recess. The winner of Brian Mendoza, who also lost his last fight. And Serhei Bahachak is going to be for the WBC interim. And then you have Zoo versus Fandora for that day. There it is right there for the WBC vacant. Weird WBC. Weird. Like how? How did they just created two belts out of nowhere? Where's the uproar? Where's the rage? Baby hands Ray Flores. He was being rude. I don't know if he was on time constraints, but he was cutting everybody off. Especially the undercar fighters. <laughs> if he was watching it, I, I I should play it back. We're going to wait for Big J. But he was cutting everybody off. But yeah, once you listen, very, very good pay-per-view. By the way, look at this height difference. Y'all think this is going to mean something? The ribs are right there. And you know, and you know, he got all that height, Sebastian Fendora. But he don't use it. He don't use it. He got a nice uppercut, but he don't use it. But to be very honest... Tim Zoo should be able to beat him. I'm beating Tim. I mean, I'm picking Tim Zoo, but I don't know Diddy. I'm picking Tim Zoo. 
Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Sebastian Fendora win. Maybe this is his night. You know, he's still young, you know, on the big stage. Tim Zoo has been on the big stage in his own country. Oh, you know what? Know something else? The Australia main event, who is the broadcaster over in Australia, they're promoting this fight more than the States is promoting this fight. Where Tim Zoo is fighting. I am not a fan of the promotion of this fight for Tim Zoo. Even before Keith Thurman, you know, um, got injured. And by the way, I think he's cooked. How can you trust him? How can you trust Keith Thurman after this? I believe it's a legit injury. I just think that he's missed a glass. You know, and Anthony Davis, by the way, if you watch the Lakers, he's played. He's one game, I believe, away from playing the most games he's played since like 2018 or some shit. You know, they call Anthony Davis Mr. Glass. Keith Thurman is boxing Mr. Glass. Well, Mira Khan's chin, but that he's kind of retired. You can count him. But do arms, shoulders, elbows, like, you know. And of course, he got the jelly belly. Like, how can you trust him? But. Tim Zoo versus Crawford. I got Terrence Crawford, by the way. Oh, let me tell you something. I don't mind saying it. Look, I've been doing this shit for too long. Australian fans, not all of them. I'm not saying all of you. I'm not painting you all with the same brush. But some of them, some of them be just straight delusional. I'm talking about they be saying some dumb ass shit. And, and let me tell you something. They love them some Tim Zoo. They will ride, ride, ride. Like they be cussing me out. I'd be like, yo, I haven't seen nothing yet. Beating up Terrell Goucher ain't enough for me. Beating up Carlos Ocampo ain't enough for me. Brian Mendoza ain't enough for me. I was impressed with Tony Harrison. But they'd be like, they'll say, if, if you ask some of them fans, they'll say he'll beat Canelo today. They'll say he can go to 175. Oh, let's listen to what Tim had to say. He just came to the podium, for those who didn't hear. But listen, he good. Look, we're finally here. It's been, a, it's been a long road, uh, but I've dreamt of this moment my whole life, you know. Every, every moment that I've done has led to this point, and, and I'm glad to be doing it and representing everyone and, and doing it on this uh, specific, specific day. You know, it's been a change of events, but you know what? The show goes on. We saved it. Uh, destiny awaits, and uh, I can't wait to put on a show. Uh, I should be having two belts now. I don't know why, why that belt's there. He, he hasn't earned it yet. Uh, it should be in the middle here. But Saturday night, we get to, we get to fight for, for both of them. For me, this, this period of time, it's about collecting belts, collecting legacy. And again, as I said previously before, the greatest boxing family ever lived. It's happening right now, right here. So tune in. Yeah, very boring press conference. You know, um, I want them to find a way to switch up the format with these pressers. Like, they just be so, look look how dreary it looks. Looks like an A24 movie, don't it? Look how, like, look, it's just be dreary. And don't get me started on top ranking Mark Chinook. No disrespect, Mark Chinook. But they got to switch up these press conferences in De La Hoya. Um, and I want to like to uh, uh, bring to the stage uh, the former... Uh, 168 pound uh, champion, Humberto Zoro Ramirez. Like, you know, these shits, man. Oh my God, Tom Loeffler. You know, you know, listen, I don't never want to see him at a press conference again, leading a press conference. Oh, uh, well, you know, uh, we're going to bring up uh, Triple G here. And uh, like, bro, they got to switch these shits up. UFC events, yes, yeah, rednecks and young kids and everything, but those press conferences be electric. The cheering and everything, these shits be. I'm just sorry, I'm a little bit of a rant. We're waiting for Big J to call in. We're going to get his thoughts on the fight, final predictions live. I'm going to be here for the weigh in tomorrow as well. And we're going to be here post fight. I'm actually doing a post fight stream, something we haven't done in a long time. Something we haven't done in a long time. Um. We're going to talk about Haney, Ryan Garcia. We're going to talk about um, uh, Fury versus Usyk. 
Wilder versus Big Bang Jay Lee Zhang. And don't, now, don't you know something? Deontay Wilder is in talks to sign with Matchroom. How about that? How about those apples? Is the LDBC still a thing? I'm not even joking to you. I'm not joking anymore. I don't even know. I don't even know if there's still a thing. I don't even know if there's still a thing. But yeah, shout out to the Saudis too. Let me see what Big J has to say. He's coming in now. Hang in there, guys. All right, man. Uh, you're live. What's your thoughts? What's going on? It's very boring. Got press my head down. It was a very boring press conference. I'd say somber. I wouldn't say boring. I'd say it's somber. I expected someone to get up and get up and start smacking each other and you know chairs thrown and all sorts of shit. But look at the way. At least it was done professionally. Here's the, here's the thing. I've got a bone to pick with you American fans. How come you guys don't think this is pay-per-view worthy? There's five fucking titles on the line. What more do you motherfuckers want? You'd rather pay money to see that YouTube wanker fight a re friggin' senior citizen than actually give this the respect it's due. You guys need to pull your heads out of your asses and actually appreciate the actual sport instead of worrying about this novelty bullshit. It, do, it, it doesn't bring right. in casual fans. You know, nobody knows. He's an Australian, okay? Fighting on pay-per-view You know, America. I'm talking about the entire card. I'm talking about the entire card. Not oh, just yeah, Zoom yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the entire card. People saying this card's not pay per view. Yeah, but yeah, basically, is, basically, it's like you're giving us a prime rib with fighters like Canelo, you know, and Terrence Crawford and Spence fighting on pay per view, and then you're giving us this Jack Daniels burger here, you know, with Tim Zhu, and it's no disrespect to the fighters of Sebastian Fendor. It's like it's a deep, you know, for the for a main event on a basically it's a sixty nine ninety nine fight that if this was two, three, four years ago, it would have been on regular Showtime. Yeah, true, but it's not worth seventy bucks. I, I won't argue that. Well, then point. there no, you go. What, what do you mean? There money. you go. It's yeah, not. It's, it's not worth no seventy it's bucks over here. Paper. Oh, no, 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 it's not. Now, for you guys, and now for you guys, for Tim Zhu, as we talked about, they make you Australians pay for everything over there, anything. You know, so I can see how it's pay per view over there because what I've noticed on the main event broadcast, and I'm gonna pull it up here on the uh, screen, it was a lot more. For example, they even had post uh, uh, press conference interviews. You know, so they oh, did. They God. did. Per, they did more promotion over in for main event in Fox than they did over on the state. Like it's a whole different broadcast. They got Andre Ward and everything. Yeah, yeah because they've got to get the pay per view buys up, of course, because that's No Limits um, model, as we've discussed. Smaller venues, smaller gate, but bigger pay per view revenue. That's but their yet you model. see, but yeah, you see what I'm saying over here. Where this is Amazon Prime, it's PBC's first event, and the shit looks cheap over here. Yeah, you know, so we, and we talked about it, it in our video. We talked about it in our video about how you know we don't feel PBC. You know, I don't feel I don't feel that they've done Tim Zoo right for this first promotion. You know, of this. For I don't this think they've done any of them right. I don't mm. think they've done any of them right personally. So uh, I don't think they've done any of them right. But at least they've got the fight happening. So mm. there's there's a positive. So well, but, go ahead. But, give your thoughts yeah. on the fight. How does it play out? I'm uh, ninth round knockout to Zoo. I'm going to stick to that. Mm -hmm. So even though there's a massive height difference, I mean, I've seen Tim. He's a five eight five nine. That fendora has got to be at least six five. Six, at least. He's listed as six five and a half. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Because he's a he's a monster of a guy. Well, he's tall, but he's not. You know, he's a lanky fella. So mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, um, I'm going. I'm going uh, Zoo. Uh, ninth round knockout. Oh, so probably the body shots. Please welcome these. Okay. No, I'm listening. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying ninth round knockout. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm that's what I'm going with. Yeah. Um. So, um. Uh. What are you What are your thoughts on this news about the Crawford situation? You know that um Glenn Jennings, the, the manager, um said that they would take on. I mean, they would take on Errol Spence over Crawford, and that he would drop his belt. Like, what have you heard about that so far? What That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why, why would he do that? I mean, I mean, Tim is trying to get away from this reputation of fighting up blown up welterweights, and that's what he continues to do. That's all he does is fight blown up welterweights, washed up welterweights. I mean, why would he fight Errol Spence? Errol, Errol Spence 
What were you, uh, in preparation for Crawford? Yeah, okay, I can see that. But why not just fight Crawford? It's a bigger and better fight. Well, Crawford's the mandatory, so he can't get out of it. <laughs> exactly. So why would he drop his belt? The go and fight Errol Spence, which would give him nothing, no credibility. Like you just, you just, you just beating up a guy that got the crap kicked out of him in his last fight, and it's never fought at 154. Why would you fight him? I don't, at least go why, fight I don't understand why he would say that at all. Like that doesn't, like just him saying that just shows their thought process of what, what they're trying to do. Yeah, it's like, and people keep saying, "Oh, you're a Tim Zoo hater." No, I'm not. I'm just pointing out the facts. He just continues to keep, keep doing this crap of beating up welterweights. Well, that's all he wants to do. It drives me insane. Mm. It's like he, he wants to waste his time in Vegas where clearly no one cares. Why go to Vegas? No one cares. Come here where you'll get bigger fights. If he fought Spence in Australia, that'd be 30,000. If, if they had this fight in Australia, they'd get 30,000 people to it. Jeez. Easy. Easy. I don't understand what the fluctuation with Vegas is because Vegas doesn't care about him. So why does he care so much? I don't understand. I, I can't get it through well, my head. You know, he wants to be an American star. The Americans don't care about him. Why care about America? Mm. It's like there's other players. I said in the last video, America, Vegas is no longer the boxing mecca that it was 20 years ago. There's other places all over the world, including Australia, where you can go to have big fights mm. and make big paydays. Well, listen to this. Uh, Errol Spence just posted on his Instagram <laughs> that he's headed to Vegas and he wants to wonder if Zoo versus Vendor. Yeah, good luck with that. So. I'm starting to think that something. Why would they? And, and you know what? Like I'm the way that they're. T- why would they take that fight? Like it does. It's a step. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Spence is a bad fight, but when you got Crawford right there, it's going to be. It's going to look like a duck. Especially if he drops his belt, it's going to look like a duck. Exactly. It's going to look like a flat out duck. Flat out duck. So, um, but I think that's just who hire and just. Spence get his name out there. I don't think serious, they would seriously entertain that. Why would they? They already said it. So he, The manager said it. Yeah, I can't believe Glenn Jennings would actually say that because that's not in his character. He would, I mean, why would they entertain that? I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Well, if what I'm getting fight. from it is, what I'm getting from it is, they're not ready for Tim Zoo to potentially lose yet. That's what I'm getting from it. They want to keep the gravy yeah, train going. <laughs> Oh, well, even if he lost to Crawford, it wouldn't stop the gravy train. No chance. Come on. Yeah. This, this, as I said, the Floyd. This, they've said this all week in Australian boxing. This, the Floyd Mayweather effect has got to stop. If you lose, it's not the end of your career. For the love of God, I mean, get out of yourselves. I mean, people think they're that important or they're that weak that if they lose, their career's done. If you think like that, then you're not a boxer. Oh, one well, loss and I'm done. What, what's that crap mentality? Yeah. That's that's. You're not done because you lose one fight. Get out of yourselves. You know? yeah. well, George, he's lost three. He's lost two fights, and he's still going. So, yeah, still. Well, it's, it's, it's a bad look. He should have kept that shit to himself. So it's. I, I think they should just not worry about um, Spence because you know what? What does that bring? It's yeah. money, but really, what does that bring? Yeah, Stay he should have he he kept that shit to himself because now it, it seems to me that his team is not confident that Tim can beat Crawford. So they're like, hold up, let's save this for later on down the line. Let's see how we do against Spence first. And then even worse, I can see, okay, okay, all right, you fight Spence. But then he's talking about dropping the belt too? Oh, no. Uh-uh. No, no, I can't ride with that. No, no, I can't, 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 no. Can't, can't ride with that. But he's, he's the man to so he's got. To, and then, and then for for Spence to come back to try to fight Terence Crawford's opponent, you know that he made himself mandatory for instead of fighting Crawford. That's a whole different video involved with Spence because I can't believe you know like that he's even trying to trying to do that. It it doesn't make any sense. The, it's a weird old game boxing at times. Mm, it really is. Mm, mm. Yeah. All right. Um, um. Since I got you on the phone. Uh. Um. Valdez versus Liam Wilson. It's now, um, as we talked about, it is now officially for the WBO interim title. We can expect for the winner of uh, Valdez versus Smith, uh, Wilson to be elevated sometime before uh, Navarrete steps into the ring against Dennis Baranchek on uh, May the 18th, the week oh, after minutes. Loma versus um, uh, Cambosos. <laughs> oh, Big J, you there? Yes. Sorry, man. Oh, sorry. Man. Go ahead. 
Sorry, bad line. Yeah, Valdez. Valdez will. Um, I don't know what happen, what's going to happen there, mate. So. Yeah. Um. Oh, hold on. Uh, I think it's. Go ahead. Go. What were you saying? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Big J Kids. Um, we'll get him back on the uh, line a little bit later on. But anyway, um, I don't like the move. I don't like the fact that his manager said that. It's like, why would you say that out in public? You know, and now the clean reputation that Tim Zoo had of wanting to fight everybody pretty much just went out the window. Because now that that is out there, because me personally, I thought they were on the fast track. I'm not saying it's not going to happen that Crawford and Zoo are going to fight sometime in July. It all makes sense, especially since Crawford had a meeting with the WBO president not even a month ago. And then all of a sudden now he's the WBO mandatory. So the only way he can not fight Crawford is if possibly he fights a unification, but then the WBO would have to approve. And then the unification would be either Ismail Madrimov or then he would fight what? Uh, 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 well, the WBC situation is already trash. Remember, they got Jamel Charlo, who's the champion in recess. What that means is if he comes down to, um, if he comes back and stays at 154 pounds, then the winner of Zoo, Fundora, has to fight him. So that's a situation right there. Crawford's the WBO mandatory. And then also with the WBC, you have Brian Mendoza and Sir Head Baranchek, Bahachuk, who's the, going to be fighting for the WBC interim champion. Just confusing, shitty situation with the WBC. So real quick, before we talk about uh, Valdez um, versus Liam Wilson, this fight is on, this fight is tomorrow. Top rank on ESP, and it's a Friday night fight. They weighed in today. It's for the WBO interim title now, just announced a couple of days ago. How many paper vibe buy, how many excuse me how many pay per view buys do you think that Zoo versus Fandora is going to do? I'm thinking in the states. We're talking about in the United States, not over, not worldwide, not over in Australia on main event pay per view. I I mean, can it do? Can it do eighty thousand? Can it do a hundred thousand pay per view buys? Can Zoo versus, I mean, it's a, it's a great card. You do got Isak Cruz and Roley. Roley's going to bring in some numbers. Isak Cruz, you know, Fedora, they, they got the they got the Mexicans. They got us Mexicans. Like, it's a great card up and down. It's a great card up and down. I got to be honest. Let's go look at it. Zoo, Fedora, boom, WBC, WBO. Roller Romero, WBA at 140. Ares Lindy Lara, Mick Zarafa, WBA. This is a sleeper fight. I would not be surprised if Zarafa wins. Mendoza versus Baron Bahachuk. I really want to see him. Pay attention to this guy. Pay attention to Bahachuk. Pay attention to him. He's supposed to be the, the guy, the next guy in the division. Pay attention to him. Us Mexicans. You got Julio Cesar Martinez taking on Angelino Cordova. Uh, Martinez, by the way, looked drained today. That's one, two, three, four, five, six titles on the line. It's just not a $69.99 card to me. Let's look at a little bit of the press conference. It's like five minutes of a Q&A, not even that long. No diddy. I'm just joking. Let me stop being immature. Um, so this press conference wasn't very exciting at all. So that's why I've been skipping through it and just playing you just the, the good parts. You do not have to go back and watch this. I'm doing the work for you. This is the only part you need to watch. It's only five minutes long. But ain't nothing really, you know, happened on this joint. I'm not saying that they got to go up there and act like degenerate animals and throwing chairs and smacking each other and spitting at each other and all that. I'm just saying we got to add some more spice to these joints. You know, bring back Brian Custer. You know, get him up there. I like, you know, don't get me wrong. Baby hands, Ray Flores, he good. 
for the for the media calls and he good for the virtual pressers you know post fight press conference you know it's after the fight so it's not too much work he, can, he has to do but in the lead up i'm just not feeling him i'm just not feeling him you know no he's off of a red hot 2023 oh, what a run that he had beating the likes of tony harrison brian mendoza and carlos ocampo he is a superstar in his home country of australia but the one thing that he's always said is that I want to come here to Las Vegas and headline a massive night of boxing as a world champion. Well, Tim, ask and you shall receive and you've earned every bit of it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the pride and joy of Australia. Here is the undefeated and the reigning and defending WBO super welterweight champion of the world. Here is Tim Azoo. Look, we're finally here. It's been a, it's been a long road, uh, but I've dreamt of this moment my whole life. You know, every every moment that I've done has led to this point, and and I'm glad to be doing it and representing everyone, and and doing it on this uh, specific specific day. You know, it's been a change of events, but you know what? The show goes on. We saved it. Uh, destiny awaits, and uh, I can't wait to put on a show. Uh, I should be having two belts now. I don't know why, why that belt's there. He, he hasn't earned it yet. Uh, it should be in the middle here. But Saturday night, we get to, we get to fight for, for both of them. For me, this, this period of time, it's about collecting belts, collecting legacy. And again, as I said previously before, the greatest boxing family ever lived. It's happening right now, right here. <laughs> Tim Zhu, ladies and gentlemen, as Tim mentioned, he's looking to further that family legacy. Well, what a start that he has had. And now I'm going to talk with the fighters. I'll start off with Angelino Cordova. As you can see, this is the clip of um, Fedor's last fight, his very last fight last year. When he got knocked out by Brian Mendoza. His very last fight. His very last fight. Angelino, have you thought about the moment that if you're able to top your adversary on Saturday when they say, and the new WBC flyweight champion of the world, what that would mean for you and your home country of Venezuela? <laughs> Eh, eh, decir y el nuevo y, y todo lo que va a significar para Venezuela, ¿no? ¿Qué, qué, ¿Cómo te lo imaginas a eso? Oye, bueno, oye, sí, oye, la verdad, eh, sí me lo imagino, sí me imagino ese momento y pues no es desde ahora, desde hace mucho tiempo, sí, y pues ya se ha llegado el momento se acerca y pues y nada, estoy muy lleno de emoción y pues nada, solo llegará el momento, esperando. I've been picturing this not just in the past few days, but for a long time now. And I can't wait till that moment comes and I get to make my country proud. And you know, it's, I'm full of emotion, I'm full of excited, I'm so excited and I can't wait to make it come true. What kind of fighter are you expecting from the champion Julio Cesar Martinez? Eh, ¿Qué tipo de pelea esperas de parte de Martínez como rival? ¿Qué tipo de pelea esperas de, de parte de Martínez como rival? Pues eh, yo, yo vengo como, como dicen la música, pues al ritmo que él toque yo voy a bailar, al, al ritmo que él esté yo voy a estar. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be like a concert, right? And you gotta dance to the beat. So while, so whatever beat Martinez brings, I'm gonna dance right along to it, and I'm gonna be very comfortable doing so. All right, Angelina Cordova. Now I'm gonna go to the champion Julio Cesar Martinez. Julio Cesar, being the first fight on the pay-per-view, how big of an honor is this for you as you prepare to defend your world championship against Angelina Cordova? Qué tan honrado se sentís de ser la primera pelea del pay-per-view por Amazon Prime. Pues muy contento, muy emocionado que vamos a regresar pues de, de unos meses de inactividad y pues unos problemas que hubieron ahí 
pero pues contento, motivado, como siempre, no al 100, sino al 1000. Y como siempre, ¿verdad? Con quien sea. I'm sorry, I don't care about no Julio Cesar Martinez. I want to see here what Rolly has to say. What did y'all say his head look like again? This guy, here is Lindy Lara. This guy, here is Lindy Lara, has been an American since I was like in the fifth grade. He's going to be 41 years old. And he don't speak no, he don't even, he don't speak no English still. At all. In the ring after, after some time off, but look, I've stayed active, I feel ready, and you see what I'm capable of. What kind of statement are you looking to make on Saturday? ¿Qué tipo de mensaje estás tratando de enviar este sábado? Este sábado voy a enviar un mensaje que todavía hay Erilando y Lara para pa rato y voy a seguir siendo campeón a 160 libras para seguir con los, peleadores, con los mejores peleadores. The statement is that Eris Lani Lara is still here to stay. I'm not going anywhere and I want to go up against the best after this fight as well. Eris Lani Lara, ladies and gentlemen, the WBA middleweight champion of the world, now co-main event, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Isaac, we see that you Anybody look pick a rolling? in physical shape. Oh, what, what do you feel, feel the, the difference, difference is going to be on Saturday against Rolando Rolly Romero? Isaac, te vemos en una forma física espléndida. ¿Qué pensás que es lo que marcará la diferencia contra Rolly Romero este sábado? Eh, pues el trabajo que venimos haciendo durante toda la preparación, antes de que acabara el año también, y las ganas de ser nuevo campeón del mundo y ganar el campeonato cueste lo que cueste. It's all going to be about the foundation we have set as a team training since the end of last year, really. I want to be the new champion. That's the main goal, and nobody's going to take my sights away from that. What did you learn in your first world title opportunity against Gervonta Davis that you feel you're going to be able to utilize to your benefit on Saturday against Rolly? ¿Cuál fue la lección principal que aprendiste de tu pelea contra Gervonta que, que, que pensás que se podría aplicar en esta pelea de sábado contra Rolly? El aprendizaje fue de no dejarle nada a los jueces y para eso me preparé. Traigo el aire suficiente para estar tirando segundo tras segundo golpes. I learned that I don't have to leave it up to the judges. I, I want to go out there and throw punch after punch. I'm in good enough shape to do so from beginning to end. Does he annoy you when he says, I'm going to knock you out, and he even said in his opening comments, it's going to be easy? ¿Te molesta cuando Rolly dice cosas como que te va a noquear, que va a ser fácil, que, que vas a ser golpeado por él porque sos estúpido? ¿Qué te, qué te generan ese tipo de comentarios? Pues nada, él, él está yo creo que más estúpido porque piensa que voy a subir amarrado de las manos o con los ojos vendados, pero él también no se da cuenta que va a estar sentado en un barril de pólvora y que él también va a salir noqueado. If he thinks I'm stupid, he's even stupider because what does he think that I'm going to oh, have shit. like a bandage around my eyes and my hands tied? If, if he thinks that I'm just going to lay down, he's very, very mistaken and he's going to realize it on Saturday night. Roly, going to your point and furthering that, uh, why do you feel it's going to be easy? I know yesterday you mentioned to me it could very well be the fight of the year, but now today you're saying it's going to be easy. You're saying that he's going to run into something. Why do you feel it is going to be sort of, quote unquote, uh, a walk in the park for you on Saturday? Well, I mean, he said it himself right now. He's just going to come over there and throw and throw and throw and throw. He does the same shit over and over and over again. One over here. One over here, gets punched over here, gets punched over here. Same shit over and over again. What do you have on your, uh, you have a chain that I see. Can um, you explain that to, to the uh, fans and the media around the world? So explain to us what you are wearing. This right here is my good luck charm. It's Chihuahua Cruz. So it is Chihuahua Cruz. Let's go ahead and take a look at that with our camera. Isaac, how do you respond to that? He's wearing a chain calling you a uh, chihuahua and he's wearing sí. you on his neck. Está bien, va a ser la, voy a hacer la pesadilla. Te lo regalo después de la pelea si tú quieres. I'm going to give it to you after the fight. hace falta más a ti para que me recuerdes. Yo no te puedo regalar la fama, pues te regalo esto después. Al contrario, te, te voy a regalar yo más fama que la que tienes. I can give you the belt, but I can give you the chain if you want after the fight. So, Rolly, are you going to put that chain on the line as well with your belt? No, he already got after I knocked his ass out. 
All right, so in terms of how much of a statement that would be, if you follow through on your prediction and you're able to knock out Isaac Pitbull Cruz, how big would that be for you uh, in your career? We can go ahead and just pass along the microphone. There you go. How big would it be if you're able to follow through on your prediction and knock him out? Because, I mean, he's very durable, very determined, went the distance with Javante Davis. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's a great opportunity that, uh, that I've been given over here. But in reality, the opportunities for him to try to win the belt, I'm already champion. I don't need him. I'm the one that made this fight. It wasn't him. Right or wrong? Well, you could have fought any variety of different guys. But why did you decide to settle on Isaac Cruz? Because I want to make a fire fight. I want to make it fun. I want to make it fun for the fans. And this is the fight that all everyone's been asking for for the longest amount of time. Right or wrong? Oh, you're right. Okay, so. Well, let's talk about doing, your I'm trainer. Doing, I'm doing everybody a favor right now. This is going to be a fun one. Y'all going to see it. Tune in March 30th, Amazon Prime pay-per-view. Ismael Salas, we've been seeing videos of you. You've been, you know, working with Ismael Salas, moving around, doing a lot of feints and, and head movement. Uh, how much better do you feel with Ismael Salas that you guys are reunited? Honestly, it feels great. You know, it feels like I'm, you know, like, like I'm back at home. You know, like I say, he, he had a big influence on my, you know, especially before, right before I turned pro. Like, literally, I got signed to Floyd literally, what, two weeks after I, uh, you know, I, I, I left the gym. So, I mean, he had a big influence on me and me being the fastest person to ever get signed to a major promoter as well. I at 17, I got signed at 20. It's been an unbelievable journey. Rolando Rolly Romero, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's focus in on our main event. Sebastian Fundoram, you took this fight on 11 days notice. You were supposed to fight on the card. Now you have the biggest opportunity of your career. You can pick up two world championships as you go head-to-head -head against Tim Zhu. What kind of moment are you looking to have on Saturday night on PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video? This is the moment that Tyron Inferno becomes world champion. My sister did it six, six, six months ago. Now it's my turn. Did that really sort of invigorate you even that much more and everything else? I mean, we've heard it from fighters that you learn a lot when you have a stumble. Uh, how much has that impacted you as you prepare for the biggest moment of your career? You know, it, it, it happens in boxing. You know, uh, uh, I made a mistake. I paid for it. I feel like everything's still lined up the way it should be. Uh, uh, um, they gave me this opportunity to fight Tim Sue. This is going to crown the best fighter at 154. All right, now let's go to the champion. We'll come back to you, Sebastian. Uh, Tim, you're going to be facing a, a literally a very tall task. Uh, for those that don't know, we talked about it yesterday, but this is the largest height disparity in a non-heavyweight fight. So, Tim, you know, he's not, he's literally very tall, and, and you know he's awkward, and he has a significant reach advantage. Uh, how have you been able to prepare for that on such short notice? Well, look, it's, it's quite hard to prepare, especially when you got, well, 12 days. Uh, but a true champion just uh, rises to the occasion, adapts to everything that's put in front of them. So... You know, I came here as a, like a throwback fighter, and I, and I keep trying to... Once it, again, I, I, I love the card. Be like, like that, you know? I, I am. I'm living the person that I, that I speak. I'm not, I'm not a bullshitter. I'm here to do exactly what I, what I say, and, and this is why I take the fight, and this is why, like, yes, height, uh, of course, there's, there's, there's many advantages, but look, we're, we all bleed the same blood, so... There's no difference between us. And, and if, if, you know, if you're watching history, Mike Tyson did a lot of damage in the heavyweight division back in the days. So I guess I'm taking inspiration from, from Iron Mike in this one. Tim, for you, I remember when you fought Terrell Gachet in Minneapolis a couple of years ago, but this is something that you've always wanted. It was, it was one thing to fight in the United States and, and headline, but you've always said about main eventing here in Las Vegas. Watching you during fight week, you look to be so relaxed, comfortable. You're dealing with the media obligations. Uh, you're taking it all in stride. Is it because you always knew that if you put the work in, that you would be here at this moment? Of course. You know, every, every, as I said previously, every moment has led to this. This is my 12th time doing pay-per-view. So I'm, I'm used to this, this bright, bright lights and, and all of this stuff. But I had a vision from, uh, I guess, from a young age. Uh, in 2009, I came here to watch Manny Pacquiao versus, versus Miguel Cotto, 
And I remember I had a tweak. I had a tweak in my, in my brain saying that this one day, this is where I want to be. And now I'm walking into this press conference and Miguel Cotto sitting right here and I'm full fanboying. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so, you know, like, it's a, it's a crazy moment for me to, to be in this position and, I, and I'm taking it with, uh, with both hands. Sebastian, what kind of fight are you expecting out of Tim Zhu? We watched him last year. He went 3-0, and looked phenomenal in all three of his outings. But what kind of fight are you expecting out of him? I expect the, the best fight from Tim Zhu. You know, this is, again, this is, I think, the best fight you can make at 154. He's uh, the number one in the weight right now. I think this, this fight with the unification of the WBO and WB, this will crown the new champion of the weight division. Tim, what kind of fight are you expecting from the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora? You know that he loves to mix it up on the inside. Are you expecting anything less? No, I, I feel like he's coming in for the brawl. He's good at what he does. He's got these long, lanky arms, and uh, I know the shots. It's all about eliminating what he's got and uh, showing what he's not good at, and, and, and that's the best thing about boxing is that he gets to expose my weaknesses and I get to expose his weaknesses. So it's, it's, it's going to be one, one hell of a barner, let's just say that. Sebastian, you're the underdog coming into this fight. Uh, does that motivate you at all? Is that sort of fuel for fire as you prepare on this opportunity on Saturday night, PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video? Uh, a lot of people say I have these advantages, and I do, I do have these advantages, but I always look at myself as the underdog. Even when I had the interim champion, I considered myself the underdog, so it's just time to prove again what we're made of. Is this sort of, have you even, you know, dreamt of how it could possibly be when you're able, if you're successful on Saturday, what holding both world titles would mean to you? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. This is my dream. This is my dream. I trained very hard my whole life to become and to fight on a stage like this. You know, uh, thank you to Samson. Thank you to Al Heyman for giving me the, the opportunity to fight on this, uh, to fight my dream. And uh, come Saturday night, the dream come true. Tim, finally, before we go ahead and conclude, is this, assuming that everything goes your way on Saturday, is this the official declaration of the Tim Zhu era here in the United States, main eventing in Las Vegas for what I'm sure you want to be many times moving forward? Yeah, for sure. You know, this is step one to, to where I want to be. Uh, this is only a, a little part, you know. I've already won this belt uh, with Mendoza. Uh, now we go for the second. It should have been me, Mendoza, fighting for those two belts already. So uh, I don't know why his belt's there. Well, He's got a point there. Belt, why, why is the belt, belt, belt even there? But yeah, yeah this, this is, is a new era, era and uh, there's plenty of big, big super fights to be made in the, in the near future. All right, before I let these guys go, I'm going to start off with Angelina Cordova real quick. He's got a point right there. If, they, if they're making this WBC shenanigans, if they're making this Zufandora, for the WBO and the vacant WBC, then Zhu should have been able to fight Mendoza for the WBC interim that he took from Fendor when he knocked him out in his last fight. Weird. Boxing can be weird like that. But um, enough about Zhu versus Fendora. Let's talk about this other fight tomorrow. Um, if you're going to be in the crib, you have Oscar Valdez, who's going to be taking on Liam Wilson for the vacant WBO well, it's the WBO interim title. It was just announced um, a couple of days ago. It's going to be for the WBO interim. Um, Emmanuel Navarrete is supposed to be fighting Dennis Baranchek for the WBO at 135, May the 18th, the week after Loma um, uh, Cambosos for the IBF. So we could see Loma Cambosos' winner taking on that's my uh, dog food being delivered my ring bell um you could see the winner of valdez versus wilson taking on no excuse me the winner of navarate versus baroncheck taking on the winner of loma versus cambosos to unify the ibf and the wbo but on to this card oscar valdez as i talked about earlier this week with big j um He's got a lot of miles on him. You know, he's been in some wars, had his jaw broken. You know, all of his, well, both of his big fights, pretty much he's lost. His, you know, the the Burchelt fight, that was a significant win. Basically, he took Burchelt's soul. He hasn't really been back since or in the same form since. Um, Outworked by Navarrete. I thought, you know, Navarrete, he could have got him. Navar Liam Wilson, who Valdez is fighting, had a better fight against Navarrete, even though, you know, he got stopped. 
But on um, the Shakur Stevenson, he just got outclassed. So when it comes to Liam Wilson, Australian fighter, let me be honest with you. You know, I've covered the guy several times. Oh, what am I doing? I've covered the guy several times. Uh, you know, he's got a puncher's chance. That's about it. But Valdez, unless he gets old overnight, should be able to outclass him and beat him. Knock him out. He could knock him out. Uh, looking at that division, let's see what's possibly next. So, Shockey Foster, maybe. So, I'm guessing the winner, which is going to be Liam Wilson Valdez, will get elevated before Navarrete steps into the ring in May. And the winner, Valdez versus Wilson, if it's Valdez, will unify against Oshaki Foster. Lamont Roach is with PBC. Joseph Cordina, Joe Cordina. He may be moving up, right? Remind me what's going on with him. Well, anyway, he's a matchroom fighter. So bet your money that it's going to be Valdez, Wilson versus Oshaki Foster for, to unify. Um, who else is on the card? Highly anticipated women's boxing event. Minimum weight, 105 pounds or is it 103? 105. This girl bad. Super bad. Like she will piece you up. Like she can fight, fight, fight. Like combinations. Like she can box. I haven't seen too much surprisingly of Vale. I haven't seen too much of her surprisingly. And that's rare for me. 30 and 2 with 9 KOs, 31 years old. But from what I'm hearing, she's really, really good. Ooh, eye candy. Let's go look at their uh uh, we're not objectifying women here. I'm just saying she had a nice bra, uh, like weigh in outfit that had like tassels on them. I like tassels. I love tassels. Hold on. Let me, uh, pull up their weigh in. Tassels are awesome. You don't like tassels. The tassels, you know, ultimate warrior used to wear them. Some boxers wear them on their trunks. But who do y'all think going to win this? Hmm? You have uh, Raymond Maritala returning. Future Shakur Stevenson opponent. Richard Torres Jr. is on the card. Emiliano Vargas, son of Fernando Vargas. Nice, solid card tomorrow night. This is a really good card. Look at all these undefeated fighters. Really good card. All prospects. Top rank is just the best at building up prospects. Oh, here are these two. To jump back over here. You know, Laura's 41 years old. And that's in American years, not his Cuban years. Mix the raff is up and down. You never know which one of him going to show up. One fight, he looked like he can hang at the top of the 154 pound division. The next, he just looked like complete shit. Oh, here's the uh, Isak Cruz, Roller Romero face off. We're going to be getting out of here. We're going to see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to also be uh, covering the weigh ins tomorrow. Remember, you have uh, Ursula Goulamarian defending his WBA Cruiserweight title against Gilberto Ramirez on the zone, also on Saturday. So, busy Saturday of boxing, busy weekend. Busy weekend. Roley's just got the charismatic features, man. Roley forever, Roley for life. And the crazy part about it is, Isak Cruz probably going to beat the shit out of him on Saturday. For real, for real. He ain't no Ishmael uh, Barroso, that old ass man. For real, for real. Isak probably going to beat this shit out of Roley, yo. It's probably going to be ugly. This is at 140, by the way. So let me get up out of here, gang. Uh, I got some things to do. Go to head to the gym. So remember, I'm going to be back tomorrow with some boxing. Uh, one more face off, I guess. We already seen this a billion times during this stream, but one more time for the road. Thanks for watching. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe.